All right, welcome to the podcast. On today's show, we're talking to the founders of Poplight. Thanks for coming on the pod. For the small amount of people that don't know what your company does, what are you guys working on? What do you do? Uh, Caroline and I created a USB-C rechargeable stick-on wall light that makes wall lighting easy for everybody. Now, there's a couple of things that, I, I mean, obviously I'm a fan. I'm a developer also in real estate. And so the idea that someone could do this as a renter or just in an office setting is quite amazing. Why don't you share? What is, what is Poplight? What do you guys do? Uh, people who are interested in buying it, give us a window. Publi is a stick-on renter-friendly wall light. It installs and uh, removes without causing any damage. So if you are moving a lot or you're not in a permanent place, it's great for you. If you're also just indecisive and you know have a puzzle corner and then a craft corner and then a reading corner, it moves as much as you need it to. What else, Rosie? Growing kids, we hear from a lot of parents yeah. that are like, oh, interesting. Something a kid can't rip off the wall, so can't have a cord hanging off of it. And I want to be able to adjust it as my kid goes from like, a crib to their race car bed to bunk beds. So just making it easy to install cute stick on wall lighting. We really imagined it like we had the need came from like we moved in together. We lived in a neighborhood in Denver that has really old houses or old okay. for Denver, but not, you know, really old. But um, <laughs> there was it was an old house. So electricity had been added after the house was built. So like the outlet for our bedroom, for example, was on the floor in the middle of the floor. So like not super convenient. We're like big nighttime readers. And we were like, oh, we'll just buy a stick on wall light. And when we were looking on Amazon, the only option was tap light. Do you remember those? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The under. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. The under cabinet things. Yeah. And you can probably tell from like the colors behind us we were not going to put a tap light next to our bed like no shade it's an awesome product and it works sure. really well in a utilitarian sense but we wanted something cute that we'd be really excited to have on our wall yeah. and so we had the idea for a cuter like stick on wall light that had features that we wanted and we wanted it to look like a wired wall light we didn't want people to come into our house and be like that's a stick on wall light mm. um we wanted it to look wired uh so we worked really hard on that in the design process We've heard from a lot of customers who are moving into their first dorm room, starting college, moving into their first apartment, moving in with partners, just redecorating. A lot of folks who are going to be renters for longer than they had hoped aren't just are quite just not quite ready to buy a house, but still want to have the the feeling, the look and feel of you know permanent fixtures. I know? love that right. problem. And so basically it was like you could just have extension cords running around. Is that what <laughs> sort of idea oh, of the problem? Are in the back of the house is still standing. <laughs> You know, I'll show you this real quick. So right here, you can kind of see there's a mural, right? And so you can see those lights there. And so, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, not to say this is a common problem, but one of the things about our mural was like, how do we do the electricity? So we had to really think about this. And so obviously we, yeah. this is a renovated space. And so we had the lights sort of not installed, but we had the electricity there first. Mm -hmm. But in a world where that art piece is here and I want to change it, like I'm sort of also stuck to that now, right? Yeah, That's totally. Where it's like you guys give people some flexibility in that, which is really beautiful. I love that that problem. It's an interesting problem to solve. Then people were solving it on, we went on TikTok and looked mm -hmm. for products. This is before TikTok shop existed. So it wasn't really okay. a shopping platform. And um, people were gluing, hot glue gunning wall puck lights, lights to, yeah, puck lights, which are these like LED lights into real wired wall lights, cutting the wires and then drilling a, what should have been a wired wall into their wall. So people were clearly like, I have I mean, this problem, mm -hmm. but wow. I don't have a way to fix it. So We've been like, we've been having an awesome time, like building this community of people that were like, this is what I needed. We get so many messages from people. That's like, I've been looking for this for 20 years. What was the hard part as you guys started going down the journey of creating the product? Well, the hard part is that neither of us have a background in uh, <laughs> design or engineering. I am okay. a therapist. Rose is a economist by trade. Yeah. Uh, so we really learned everything from the ground up. We really had to learn every step of the way that was the sure. personal hard part but the hard part about the product and actually i loved this process i've loved the manufacturing and product development part but the interesting part was like okay it can be on your wall but how do you remove it mm -hmm. with the correct way that the tape is supposed to be removed without right it? right and so how long did it take you guys to land that plane honestly <laughs> rose nailed it pretty quickly our original design wow. had two little cutouts but we noticed when we pulled the adhesive down we mm -hmm. had to pull it out which caused it to rip and then caused it to be mm. hard to get off the wall. And so Rose pretty quickly was like, oh, we just, just need a lot of testing. To do this. I took a prototype, an early prototype, and just with like a handsaw, cut it up so that it did what I wanted it to do. And then sent mm -hmm. it back to my design team being like, do this. And I like <laughs> sent them this like product, this piece of plastic, they 3D printed. It takes like a week to 3D print it. And I just like cut it with a saw and was like, <laughs> more like this guys. Oh, that's amazing. And so what was your first step? So you guys were there. And then when it comes to launching the product, 
you know, how do you do it? Do you do it via TikTok? Are you making videos prior to sort of your product creation? What mm -hmm. was the launch yeah. like? We did a Kickstarter, which okay. was a really interesting experience. A Kickstarter is no joke. It's a huge amount of work. And what year we, was that, by the way? What year was the Kickstarter? Last winter. Mm -hmm. last okay. February. We could talk about Kickstarter all day because there's like a lot of, I think, pros and cons to mm -hmm. a platform like that. The big con is you don't know, you're so early, you don't know what your costs are. So when you're coming up with mm. your pricing, it's really easy to make a mistake. We've heard from tons of Kickstarter products, people that are trying to start Kickstarters, they make a pricing mistake, like they underprice their product because they're really optimistic about their costs and then they end up making no money on Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. And obviously sure. the point is to fund your first purchase order. But yeah, we launched on Kickstarter, but we really had a lot of success on social media through organic socials, which is I think how a lot of people heard of us. Yeah. Um, and that was just kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. because Rebecca is an economist and she's really smart at these things, she did <laughs> with the market beforehand too. She ran some ads. She saw if there was any engagement. Yeah. Like we needed this. All of our friends needed it. But we also were like, is there some confirmation bias here that you guys like us? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so right. we really did test the idea out and we found a lot of traction for it before we really jumped in. So the Kickstarter was to pre-buy the product, right? Basically give you the funding so you can make it. And so what I love about is how an economist views a waiting list. There's something that's beautiful. Like what is, give people a window to how an economist views a waiting list. The Kickstarter is stressful because you want to get your product to people. And like you have, I had a lot of, I want to get this product out there as fast as we can. I don't want people to buy it and wait this long for it. But right. it is like a beautiful time period where you're not yet shipping. You're not mm -hmm. yet dealing with customer support. Like, hey, my product came broken, blah, blah, blah. And so you just get a lot of data and you get to kind of figure out if we acquire this many emails, how many of them will purchase? What mm -hmm. messaging needs to be in the email for people to be more likely to purchase? We did this thing where people could deposit a dollar and get early access to our Kickstarter, like just $1. Oh, That's wow. like a really interesting behavioral thing because once people deposit a dollar, they're really in. Like they're almost percent yeah. The salient cost of... Yeah. And then you could figure out, okay, how, if we get them to deposit a dollar, they're pretty likely to purchase. They're pretty likely to purchase a higher, a higher AOV cart than somebody who didn't deposit a dollar. Um, so you get to kind of learn a little bit more about your customer, but your pre-order customer is really different than like, you know, our day-to-day -day Shopify customer right now. Yeah. And as you were going through it, did you always see that if someone buys the light and they want to, let's say they move, right? And so in some way it's <laughs> reusable where they can just buy another backing. What has that business, like that side of it been like? Well, they don't have to buy the back. They just have to buy the, the adhesive. adhesive. Yeah, adhesive, yeah, right, so right, right. That part's been interesting because we've only been shipping them since May. So we don't 100% know yet, but we do okay. have we do have tons of business of people buying additional pop lights. Like I love them in my bedroom. Now I want them in my hallway. That's okay. been really cool to learn about and see that. Also like color combos. We have like, we love colors. We wanted our mm. product to be colorful seeing what color combos are common for customers super interesting mm. i think but yeah definitely people coming back for the tape especially because we buy it's 3m tape we buy it in mega bulk like we're buying tens of thousands of pieces of it so we can okay. offer it to customers a little cheaper than it would be on amazon mm -hmm. and then what brought you guys to shark tank did you guys were you fans of the show did you guys want to go on it from the beginning or did someone reach out to you all the event <laughs> someone reached out to us a producer okay. and we'd been getting some like weird mail from people and so we thought it was a scam and we didn't respond for like weeks two weeks <laughs> and then he finally reached out again and was like i'm a real person please respond and so i was it his daughter that found us i think his wife saw his we wife had a, the thing that i think was one of the best things for us early on was just going viral again and again on tiktok mm -hmm. every time we go viral something there's an amazing opportunity that comes from that because somebody sees us who wouldn't have seen us previously and mm -hmm. the person who saw us was the wife of a shark tank producer yeah, yeah, it can transform a business. We had Cake's body on the podcast. They actually just went on Shark Tank last year yeah, and landed yeah. a deal. I but that. I had met them because my friend is their husband, one of the husbands. And um, they were like, Diego, we're going viral on TikTok. Like, what do we do? And I was like, <laughs> and I was like, you double down. That's what you do. Yeah. <laughs> you, you hire yeah. like a content team if you can. And sure enough, it's wild. I mean, it. I think they're probably approaching 5 million in revenue. And, you know, from their first... TikTok that went viral maybe like two years ago. It's it's incredible what it can do. Yeah. I yeah. feel like people underestimate a little bit organic Huge. social. Like mm -hmm. You can pour money into meta ad spend, or you could just sort of like get creative and make free videos mm -hmm. that do 
really well. And then you, we repurpose our best content as ads. Cause if mm -hmm. you know it worked and went viral organically, it's probably going to work well as an ad. So it's just like an awesome playground to figure out what messaging and hooks work for your customers. Totally. So as you guys were going to go on the show, did you have a shark you wanted to get? Like, were you like, all right, this is the ideal person for us. I mean, I think like Lori obviously is yeah. a fantastic homewares, yeah. homeware QVC queen match for us. Yeah. But we also did a lot of research ahead of time and we realized she doesn't typically mm -hmm. take on projects that are this early on. So we knew she probably wasn't in the running for us, mm -hmm. but we really wanted to just get our product out there and get some feedback from them. And yeah, it was a really fun experience. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, good pitch. Congratulations on the ending. Also, what's the patent? So you guys have patents, which are really important. The sharks love that. And you have an app also, or you had, is the app still, okay. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. So give us a window into the patents. What's the technology that you guys were able to patent? We patented that we, we have an issue design patent, which protects like the way pop light looks. We also have a patent around the way the product works, the way it attaches to the wall. Mm -hmm. We have several other patents that we're still waiting to hear back from the patent office from that could take, you know, a sure. week or seven years. <laughs> and yeah. then, um, we have our trademarks and copyrights for like the brand name and the design of our brand. That's been a really interesting process. I actually spoke at the USPTO in Denver yesterday about patents, especially for like women led products, because mm -hmm. women owned businesses are typically underfunded and patent, mm -hmm. like the IP work is super expensive. Yeah. That was actually the moment when we were like, we had been designing Poplate you know, at night in the evenings, working with the design team for about three years. And then once it became time to really pay for our first patent, file our first patent, we were like, we're really doing this mm -hmm. if we, if we pay for this right sure. now, because sure. everything else had been like a little bit of 3D printing, a little bit of design spend, but the patent was the first thing where we were like, we're really doing this. And, and from what people saw on the show versus like what the app is today, is it the same or are there other functionalities that you guys have added? Oh no, it's much more thorough at the moment. <laughs> we were so early on. It has a lot of functional applications, right? Dimming the light, setting a sleep timer, choosing your color warmth. Um, yeah. Also some like, fun functionality pieces of like, you can choose the color that your pop light is on the app, rename them. Um, we get some feedback of how people have named their pop lights and they're always really fun to see. Uh, uh, that's just fun. Regardless of like hallway or bed bedroom, they have some great, yeah. some great creativity there. Yeah. And then we'll be rolling out a widget sometime in probably the next couple of months so that you can just control it from your home screen. You don't have to click into the app. You can oh, just turn it on and off, kind of increase the ease of use. And uh, the app is cool because it's this whole playground. We, it's totally. a physical product, so we don't, we don't really know how people use it besides what they tell us. But mm -hmm. with the app, you can kind of understand how, when are people using Poplite, what functionality are they using in the app. I imagine with the app, we'll slim it down because I'm sure we built in features people aren't using or maybe two users out of 10,000 are yeah. using. So yeah. I think the app is going to be like an efficiency thing where over time we'll be like, no one uses this feature. Let's stop supporting it. Yeah. Totally. Totally. And we've done all of this just super bootstrapped. Like, I created the app on Figma, which I learned how to use as I did it. And I'm not a user experience designer. So like send it off to some friends, got some feedback. Yeah. Um, but Just that's so part cool. of the of this. We're like constantly iterating and learning and trying to make it better for everyone. Yeah. I love that approach. I mean, it's kind of like a no frills, no pressure type of approach and just learning and seeing how it goes. And you have a community. And so they're, they're going to give you the feedback, which is also really important. As Barbara and, and Kevin are going through, they're fighting for you guys. I thought, I didn't realize you were going to go the Mr. Wonderful. I, I thought maybe you're going to go the other way. What did it for you guys? Oh man, I didn't think Barbara's offer was that appealing. <laughs> yeah. So it's just um, a better offer. Okay. But, I okay. thought it was just a better offer. I love, I'm a mega fan of Barbara. Yeah, oh yes. my God. Awesome. Also her social media presence is so good. Yeah. Her whole, her whole vibe. I think Kevin's hilarious too, but it's also so stressful because you're making a huge decision. Mm -hmm. totally. does, I mean, it's not live, but it feels live to you. Cause yeah. it's so, it's so, I intense. mean, it is live to us. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah it's we're real time. Like, we're yeah. for like an hour and 45 minutes. So we're like a tired. lot of the negotiation, a lot of the conversation had, you know, informed our decision, but yeah, at the end of the day, Kevin's offer made more sense for us. Mm -hmm. And did the deal close with Kevin after the show? We are still working on it. There's some oh, due you're diligence. Still in it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a long nice. yeah, yeah, no, of course. Well, that's great. And then as you guys start doing this, so like there's a couple, like what are you seeing in the marketplace now? Now that you know you've, you've gotten a lot of useful information, a lot of feedback, it sort of hit a global or a world stage. 
what is it that you guys are seeing? Is it what's the future of design in this space? Or what do you guys find interesting that maybe you're starting to see signals of in the market that you're like, we could there's more here. You know, we were just scratching the surface. Yeah, that's a great question. I think from talking to people in the lighting industry, retailers, mm -hmm. there's a really big hunger for more colorful products. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of I'm you might have seen this on the internet, but like pushback around the the Gray, millennial gray, millennial gray, and like the yeah. beigeification of like apartments <laughs> and wanting things to look more colorful. Mm -hmm. And I think people, I think something that's really helpful about our about Poplay is it's such an Instagrammable product. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's been really helpful for us because people install it and they immediately take a photo and post it because yeah. um, mm -hmm. it's cute and they want to show it to their friends. And that's really helpful for us in terms of word of mouth. But it's also like products that look great on Instagram that are easy to explain quickly. I think it just gives you more traction, but I think there's a big move towards color. And I think the rise of the forever renter is a real thing. Mm -hmm. People that really don't mm -hmm. feel like they're ever going to own a home. Yeah, absolutely. I was going to comment on that. People don't feel like they can access home ownership anymore. And yeah. so they're really investing in products that feel quality and give the look of permanence, mm -hmm. but can be taken mm -hmm. with them, right? They're investing in their spaces, their decor, their environments, instead of necessarily like the physical building that they're in. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. gives them a lot more playroom too, which is really fun. They can mix things up. They can change things out. Mm -hmm. And so that's a really fun market for us to really get feedback from and also play with. And as like Apple Home and Alexa and all these things get so far developed, is there an opportunity to integrate? Like, how do you guys see the future of that also? Yeah, yeah we're absolutely. working on that right now. It's such yeah. an interesting question because we make a lot, we think a lot about what do we use in our home and what do our friends use? We don't know anyone who uses Home or Alexa. Mm -hmm. So when we were designing Poplight, it wasn't front top of mind for us. It also yeah. creates a lot of technical not issues, but just bigger problems to solve with the app development. But um, we didn't know anybody using those products, so we didn't prioritize them. But now that we're speaking to a, a larger audience, we're hearing more need for them. Mm -hmm. We've also, maybe you'll be interested in this from the real estate side, we, we've learned of a lot of, there's a lot of development going on in Denver. A lot mm -hmm. of apartment buildings come Google Home ready. And that's our ideal market. It's like people that are moving into an apartment. Maybe they just finished at Denver University and they're moving downtown and getting their first real job. So we're we're seeing more interest for that because I kind of thought the smart home devices were sort of fading, but I think that that's totally not the case. So we're working to integrate. Yeah. It's a, it's a bit of an amenity, I guess, is the way that most developers look at it. When I think about your product, so I had a tech company also. And so when I think about your product, there's a part of me, my brain just goes nuts on the data side. Like you were saying this earlier, where you're getting the feedback as to how they're using the light. There's a really, there's a lot of interesting data sets, right? In terms of where that can go. And so I think we can, in the world prior to COVID, we could say, oh, the light's off from nine to five. If that makes sense. They're out of the house. In today's environment, you know, you're sort of seeing how people are interacting with their homes and the light is sort of an indicator. There's an interesting data set as to how people are experiencing their home and the spaces within their home. And so my brain just starts firing. Like, what does that mean? What products can you do? You know, it's interesting. It's yeah. obviously the Alexa and the Google stuff can be not so personal or just oh. feels weird. I think, but yeah. <laughs> it's interesting. Yeah. Agree. We're like trying to right now create more content around cooking with pop light. Mm -hmm. um, and there is data we could look at that shows people are using their pop light around dinner time, which mm -hmm. would probably tell us they're cooking with their pop light. So it kind of points out trends with how people are using pop light. But yeah, I mean, that's what Nest did, right? Like when they right. were, pop, were essentially right. selling the data they'd collected on how people mm -hmm. live in their homes, which is, I mean, it's so interesting to make a physical product for <laughs> the data. That's totally not what we're doing, but it's really interesting. We also don't want to ignore like office spaces. Like mm -hmm. I have a therapy office and I have two pop lights mm -hmm. and they turn on at the beginning of the day and they turn off when I go home. And also teachers, classrooms, there's a lot of different applications that we hadn't originally considered since we were designing it for our own home. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's really interesting to see how people send us feedback and they're like, this is perfect for this. And we hadn't even thought about it. Yeah. That's so fun. Well, give people a window into the future. What's on deck for the rest of this year? And then, and then maybe yeah. Q1 2025. Yeah. yeah. We have some colors we're rolling out. Yeah. Uh, it's so <laughs> it's so funny. Cause like, if we were a big company, we'd be rolling out five colors a month. We're not there yet. But so like, every color, one. <laughs> every color is so precious to us. And like, we get the prototype from our manufacturer and it's like, the most expensive pop light because it, it like that one single unit to test. So we're working on rolling out more colors. We also have more designs coming, designs that we think fit a different demographic of buyer. 
that like our core audience is going to love, but we'll probably speak to somebody who is maybe not a renter, but just wants to add wall lighting in their home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Cause we've gotten a lot of interest and it makes total sense. Cause this was our problem from people with really old homes, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. really old homes yeah, or like brick pre-war apartments. Totally. Yeah. yeah. So styles that fit like an older home. Mm-hmm. Um, we're also working on metal pop lights. Mm-hmm. Um, so it'll be fully metal instead of this, this um, pop lights, a mix of ABS and metal. So it'll be like a brush gold, which will look wow. sophisticated. Yeah. And then functionality wise, like we were talking about, we're working on integration with Google Home and Alexa, as well as rolling out a couple of other color features for the actual brightness of the bulb that we're excited about. Yeah. That's so cool. I, I had an old brick apartment building uh, in Boston and it was like to do anything we had to, I had to go through like 14 drill bits and I'm like, yeah. this is so <laughs> so you know, you know, the pain, <laughs> it's painful. It's loud. It's annoying. Yeah. The, the bits. Yeah. 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 It's like, I don't need to be doing this. This is much, yeah. a much better product. Well, thanks guys for coming on the podcast. Is there anything else? Where should people find you? Where can they buy? Yeah. Where can they support? Where can they do all the fun stuff? Yeah, they should find us on Instagram at the Poplight, TikTok at Poplight Denver, but more importantly, go to thepoplight.com. I would definitely recommend following us. Our social media <laughs> is hilarious and it doesn't all have to do with wall lighting, but it's a really fun community. Yeah, we have a great time on there. All right, that's it, guys. Thank you so much. Easy, yeah, nice and easy. Time. Yeah, thank you fun. so much for having us. Of course, of course. I'm a big fan. So good luck to you. I'll keep following. And uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, cool. Have a great day. There you go. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, share with your friends, your family, or anyone you might think might benefit from the conversation we've had today. And if you haven't already, please take a moment to leave a review on your favorite podcast platform. We'd greatly appreciate it. Your feedback helps us improve and reach more people who can benefit from our discussions. The best way to stay connected with us and get the latest updates on future episodes is through our social media channels. You can find us at Startup Storefront. We'll be back next Tuesday with another great episode. See you then.